Welcome to Lucid Mind Chemistry channel. In this video, I have put together some questions related to the topic Hess's Law. For links to other topics and question timestamps, please visit video description. Question 32 An energy cycle for the combustion of methane is shown. This is the triangle. We have methane. It combusts in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. These are the elements that are present. Which expressions can be used to calculate the energy change delta Hz? This is delta Hz that has to be calculated. In first one we have enthalpy change of formation of CH4 plus enthalpy change of combustion of CH4. As we can see that these are the elements and elements first convert into the reactants and then reactants convert into the products. So therefore this is a two step process and this is direct process in which elements directly convert into the products. So according to Hess's law, two step is equal to one step. So therefore delta H Z will be equal to enthalpy change of formation of CH4. As we only have one moles of CH4, so therefore only one value is required. And then we have enthalpy change of combustion of CH4 as one mole of CH4 is combusted to form products. So therefore, first expression is correct. In second expression, we have enthalpy change of combustion of carbon solid, which is this one and enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen multiplied by 2 which is this one. As we can see the elements can directly convert into this product and that will be the enthalpy change denoted by delta Hz as we have one mole of carbon so therefore it is just one value and we have two moles of hydrogen so it is multiplied by 2 so therefore statement 2 is also correct. For third one, we can see that we have enthalpy change of combustion of carbon monoxide and enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen multiplied by 2. As we do not have carbon monoxide in either of this cycle, so therefore this expression is wrong. Option 1 and 2 are correct. Answer is therefore B. Question 4. Delta H1 is the standard enthalpy change of formation of methane. Delta H2 is the standard enthalpy of combustion of carbon. Then we have standard enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen. This is the equation. CH4 reacts with oxygen. It combusts to form carbon dioxide and water. Which expression is equivalent to enthalpy change of combustion for this reaction? We can rewrite this equation. We have CH4. that combusts in the presence of oxygen to form CO2, gas and water. Now we have two moles of oxygen and two moles of water that are being formed. Now we can make a triangle by writing the elements present. We have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen that is present. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. These elements first form the reactants. And then reactant goes into the products or these elements can directly form the product. Now we can balance. We have two moles of oxygen atoms. So we can write two. Then we have two moles of H2. So we can write two with H2. This is enthalpy change of combustion for this reaction. In first one we can see we have CH4 that is being formed. So delta H1 is the enthalpy of formation of methane. So enthalpy of formation is the formation from the elements. So this is enthalpy of formation of methane and it is equal to del H1. Now according to Hess's law this is a two step process and this is one step process. So two steps are equal to one step. Second thing is the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon. We can see that carbon combusts in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Again, one mole of CO2 is being formed. So it is equal to del H2. So we can write enthalpy change of combustion of carbon. Or instead of this, we can also write del H2. 
Then third thing is the steady enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen. Again, hydrogen can combust in oxygen to form water. As we have two moles of water, so we can write two into enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen. Or instead of this, we can write two del H three. Now, according to Hess's law, del H one plus del H C. This is two step process. It is equal to the combination of del H two and del H three. So we can write the equation del H one plus del H C. It is equal to we have del H two and two into del H three. All are in their standard states. Now we can rearrange this equation to obtain the value of del H C. So del H C will be equal to del H two. 2 into del H3 minus del H1. This is equal to this one, so correct answer is D. Question 4. The enthalpy changes of two reactions are shown. We can see potassium carbonate reacts with HCl to produce this product. Potassium hydrogen carbonate also reacts with HCl and forms salt, water and carbon dioxide. Enthalpy changes are given. What is the enthalpy change for the reaction shown below? So we have to find the enthalpy change for this given reaction. As we have similar products in both of the reactions, so therefore let's draw a triangle and apply Hess's law. Potassium hydrogen carbonate reacts with HCl to produce potassium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. Potassium carbonate also reacts with 2 moles of HCl to produce same product. In order to balance this equation we have 2 potassium chloride. The conversion of potassium hydrogen carbonate into KCl, H2 and CO2 could be written as A. Conversion of potassium hydrogen carbonate into potassium carbonate, water and carbon dioxide can be written as B and this one as C. Now according to Hess's law, this is one step reaction and these are two steps. So therefore A is equal to B plus C. We have to find the enthalpy change in reaction B. For reaction A, we have two moles of potassium hydrogen carbonate. So therefore the value of enthalpy change must be multiplied by 2. So A is 2 into 32.8. B is to be found. The enthalpy change in C is 1 number of moles of potassium carbonate converts into salt water and carbon dioxide. So we will write minus 34 kilojoule per mole. Minus 34. So it is 65.6 is equal to B minus 34 or B is equal to 65.6 plus 34 and it comes to be 99.6 kilojoules per mole. So therefore answer is D. Question Question 7. An energy cycle is drawn for the following reaction. We have bromine liquid which reacts with fluorine gas to form bromine trifluoride. The standard enthalpy of formation of BrF3 liquid is minus 301 kilojoules per mole. The enthalpy change of BrF3 liquid to BrF3 gas is plus 44 kilojoules per mole. What is the average bond energy of the BrF bond in BrF3? Br2 liquid and 3 fluorine molecules are the reactants and we can see that they convert into this product. Now this reaction can also go in this direction. First BrF3 is formed in liquid form, then BrF3 is formed in gaseous form, then we have the product. So the product is common from both sides, so we can apply Hess's law. According to Hess's law, the product formed in one step, this is the one step or single step, 
will be equal to the product formed in several steps. Let's find the energy of each step. We have standard enthalpy of formation of BrF3 liquid equals minus 301 kilojoules per mole. Now this is for one mole and we can see that two moles of BrF3 are being formed. So the energy will be equal to minus 301 into 2 which is equal to minus 602 kilojoules per mole. Enthalpy change of BrF3 liquid to BrF3 gas is 44 kilojoules per mole. Now we can see that two moles of BrF3 liquid are converted into two moles of BrF3 gas. So therefore plus 44 will be multiplied by 2. So it comes equal to plus 88 kilojoules per mole. In this step we can see that BrF3 gas is being converted into its respective atoms. So we can find this as X. So X will be the atomization energy. Now applying Hess's law, we can say that the energy in one step, which is 698 kilojoules, is equal to the energy involved in several steps. So we have minus 602 plus 88 and X. So X will be equal to 698 plus 602 minus 88. As we have two moles of BrF3 converted into its respective atoms, so X is the energy for two moles of BrF3. So for one mole, the energy will be equal to six hundred and six kilo joules per mole. Now we can see that in one mole of BrF3, we have three BrF bonds. So three BrF bonds will be equal to 606. So in order to find the energy for one BrF bond, we will have to divide this by three. So it will be equal to 202 kilojoules per mole. And this is for 1 BrF bond. The answer is therefore B. Question 31. Nitrogen forms a number of oxides. Their enthalpies of formation are given. The enthalpy of formation of NO is plus 90, for N2O it is 82, for NO2 it is plus 33. Which statements are correct? 1. If N2O gas is oxidized by oxygen gas to NO2 gas, 16 kJ is released per mole of N2O. We can solve this by writing an equation. N2O reacts with oxygen and forms NO2. The elements present are nitrogen and oxygen. So the elements combine to form the reactants or the elements can directly form the product which is NO2. Let's balance. We have two nitrogen atoms on the reactant side so we can write 2 with nitrogen. Oxygen can be balanced by writing 2 and 3 by 2 with this O2. This arrow shows the enthalpy change of formation of N2O and it is given in the question as plus 82 kilojoules per mole. The other arrow shows the enthalpy of formation of NO2 and its value is given in the question as plus 33 kilojoules per mole. As we can see that two moles of NO2 are being formed, so it will be 33 into 2 equals 66 kilojoules per mole. Third arrow is about the oxidation of N2O and we have to find the value of X. Applying Hess's law, we have these two steps that forms the product. 
and this single step that forms the same product. So we can write enthalpy of formation of N2O plus X will be equal to 2 into enthalpy of formation of NO2. Now putting values we have 82 plus X equals 66. So X will be equal to 66 minus 82 which is equal to negative 16 kilojoules per mole. As the enthalpy change is negative, so it means that this energy is released. And also one mole of N2O were present, so it is per mole of N2O. So option 1 is correct. Option 2, the decomposition of N2O gas to nitrogen gas and oxygen gas is exothermic. Among these values, we have the enthalpy of formation of N2O. And enthalpy of formation is that when a compound is formed from its element in their standard states. So we can write this equation. As the reaction is enthalpy of formation in the forward direction. And its value is positive. So the decomposition will be the reverse of formation. So the decomposition must be negative. So therefore decomposition would be exothermic. So option 2 is also correct. Moving towards option 3. The reaction between NO and oxygen is exothermic. Let's write the equation. We have NO oxygen. It reacts to form NO2. The elements are nitrogen, oxygen. The elements first combine to form the reactants and they can also form product. We can balance nitrogen so we have 2 moles of NO and 2 moles of NO2. We can also balance oxygen by putting 2 moles. Now the first arrow is the formation of NO. So the energy is given it is plus 90 kilojoules per mole. As we have 2 moles of NO so 2 into 90 it will be equal to 180 kilojoules per mole. Second arrow shows the formation of NO2. So as energy for 1 mole of NO2 is plus 33 so for 2 moles it will be 33 into 2 66 kilojoules per mole. Now according to Hess's law this is a 2 step process and this is 1 step process. We can find whether X is negative or positive so 180 plus x equals 66 so x is equal to 66 minus 180 and it is equal to minus 114 kilojoules per mole as the energy is negative so it means that the reaction is exothermic in nature so 3 is also correct so therefore answer is A. Question 33. The diagram illustrates the enthalpy changes of a set of reactions. Which statements are correct? Number 1. The enthalpy change for the transformation U to R is plus 42 kilojoules per mole. They have given the transformations from R to S and S to U. Similarly, the transformation is given from R to T and T to U. R to T is absent, so we can find this one. As the product formed is same from both sides, so therefore the energy change will also be same. So we can say that R to S and S to U, the energy will be equal to R to T and T to U. From R to S we have negative 134 kilojoules per mole. From S to U we have plus 92 kilojoules per mole. While from R to T the energy is not given. While T to U is negative 75 kilojoules per mole. So we can find the value of X. It comes equal to 33 kilojoules per mole. So we can write 33 with 
और टूटी Now from R to T we have 33 kilojoules per mole, while T to U is negative 75 kilojoules per mole. Now in the question they have asked about the energy transformation from U to R, so it will be reverse. When going in reverse, the energy change will change the sign, so it will be plus 75 from U to T, and negative 33 from T to R. So combining these two, we can get Plus forty-two kilojoules per mole. Therefore, option one is correct. Option two: the enthalpy change for the transformation T to S is endothermic. The energy change from T to U is given. It is negative seventy-five, while from U to S, it will be the reverse of plus ninety-two. It will be negative ninety-two. So in total. From T to S, the energy change will be. We have to add these two, so it will be minus one sixty seven kilojoules per mole. So the energy change is exothermic because the sign is negative. So option two is incorrect. Option three, the enthalpy change for the transformation R to T is negative thirty three kilojoules per mole. As from R to T, we have calculated the value, and it is positive thirty-three. So therefore, option three is also incorrect. As only option one is correct, so therefore, answer is D. Question number eight: The standard enthalpy changes of combustion of carbon, hydrogen, and methanol are shown. This is for carbon atom combustion. This is for hydrogen combustion, and this is the combustion of methanol. The enthalpy of combustions are also given for each of the reaction. Which expression gives the standard enthalpy change of formation of methanol in kilojoules per mole? So we have to find the enthalpy change of formation of methanol. So making a triangle out of this. We can write the chemical equation of methanol CH3OH. It reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. The enthalpy change of combustion for this reaction is negative 726 kilojoules per mole. Let's make a triangle and apply Hess's law. We have carbon element that is present, hydrogen as an element, and oxygen as an element. So we can write carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. These element first combine together to form the reactants, and then the reactant combusts to give the products, or these element can directly convert into products. Balancing the number of elements with the compounds, we have one carbon atom. One carbon atom, two hydrogen atom, and four hydrogen atom are in the water molecule, so we can write two with this one. We have four oxygen atoms with the product, so we can write two with oxygen. Now these are the elements, and elements first go into the reactants, and then the reactants form the product. So therefore, this is a two-step reaction, while this one is a single-step reaction. Let's name this step as X, and this one as Y. Now applying Hess's law, X and minus seven hundred twenty-six will be equal to Y. In X, we can see that CH three OH is being formed from its elements, so therefore this enthalpy change will be the enthalpy change of formation of methanol. For Y, we can see that carbon is being converted into carbon dioxide, so this is the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon, as one mole of carbon is involved. So therefore, we can write minus three hundred and ninety-four for the combustion of carbon. Also, hydrogen is being converted into water. So this is the enthalpy change of combustion for hydrogen, 
and the value is given as minus 286. As there are two moles of hydrogen, so we have to multiply 2 with minus 286. This will be the enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen. Let's put these values in the given equation. So we have x. x will be enthalpy change of formation of methanol. Minus 726 equals to y. For y we have two values, first is minus 394 for the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon, second is the enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen which is 2 into minus 286. Rearranging this equation we have enthalpy change of formation of methanol, it is equal to negative 394 plus 2 into minus 286 plus 726 so from the given options we can see that the c1 corresponds to the same calculation so answer is c Question number 8. Two reactions and their enthalpy changes are shown. This is the first chemical reaction and the enthalpy change is given as plus 52.2 and in second we have negative 175.8. These data can be used to calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction shown. Now this is the reaction for which we have to find the enthalpy change. What is the value of x? Now there are two different methods for solving this question. In the first one, we are going to use Hess's law by drawing a triangle. As the product is common, so we can write this one as product. So we have C2H4 gas that has been formed. Now there are two different types of reactants. One are the elements in their standard states. So we can write carbon solid and hydrogen gas, which react together to form this product. In second formation we have C2H2 that reacts with the hydrogen to form the same product. So we can write C2H2 gas plus hydrogen and the same product is formed. Now these elements can also combine together to form these reactants. So we can draw the arrow like this. Let's balance. We have two carbon atoms and two hydrogen. The rest is already balanced. By applying Hess's law, we can see that the elements first convert into reactants and then reactants convert into products. So this is a two-step process. And if elements directly convert into the product, then this is one-step process. Now we have to calculate the enthalpy change that is in the formation of C2H2 from carbon solid and hydrogen gas. So this is this one. So therefore this arrow is the one that we are going to find. Let's give it value del H1. For second arrow we can see that C2H2 combines with hydrogen to form this product and the enthalpy change is already given which is negative 175.8 so we can write minus 175.8. Third reaction is the combination of carbon and hydrogen to form C2H4 gas. The enthalpy change is already given which is plus 52.2 kilojoules per mole. Now applying Hess's law, the energy change in two steps is equal to the energy change in one step. So we can write del H1 plus negative 175.8 equals plus 52.2. Now finding value of del H1. The answer is 228. It corresponds to part D. Now using second method, the first reaction is carbon solid reacts with the hydrogen gas to form C2H4 gas. In second reaction C2H2 gas reacts with the hydrogen gas to form C2H4 gas. And in this reaction we can see that carbon solid is present which is a reactant. So we can see that this one was reactant. Again hydrogen is given as a gas. Now hydrogen is also given as gas at two points. 
and C2H2 gas is given as product. Now we can see that C2H2 is not the product in the given reaction but it is also a reactant. Now in order to make this C2H2 gas as product we have to reverse this second chemical equation. Now rewriting first and second equation we can write 2 carbon solid plus 2 hydrogen gas forms C2H4 gas. The enthalpy change is plus 52.2. Now we have to reverse the second equation to make C2H2 as product. So we can write C2H4 gas convert to C2H2 gas plus hydrogen gas. And if we are reversing the equation, we also have to reverse the enthalpy change. So the enthalpy change will become positive 175.8. Let's combine these two equations. First cut out the ones that are similar. So we have hydrogen on the reactant side and on the product side. We also have C2H4 on the product side and on the reactant side. So they will be cut out. Now adding the remaining, we have two carbon solid. One mole of hydrogen gas is also left, so we can write H2 gas and the product is one mole C2H2. Let's add the enthalpy changes. So the net enthalpy change is 228. Now this equation is similar to this one. Therefore the energy change is X which is actually equal to plus 228. The answer is therefore D. Question number 7. The following data are needed for this question. First is the enthalpy of formation of N2H4 liquid. It is 50.6 kJ per mole. Second is enthalpy of formation of N2O4 gas, which is 9.2 kJ per mole. Third is enthalpy change of formation of water gas, which equals negative 241.8 kJ per mole. Hydrazine, which is N2H4 liquid, reacts with dinitrogen tetraoxide N2O4 gas to form nitrogen gas and water vapors. The equation is given. What is the enthalpy change for this reaction? So we have to find delta HR for this reaction. As enthalpy change of formation is given, which means that this compound is formed from its elements in their standard states. So we can find out the elements which make up these compounds. So the element is nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. These elements will combine together to form this reactant and then this reactant converts into this product or these elements can also directly convert into products. So we have two step reaction and one step reaction. Let's balance this equation. We have four nitrogen atoms plus two nitrogen atoms. So in total there are six nitrogen atoms so we can write three. Similarly we have three nitrogen atoms on the product side and eight hydrogen atoms are present so we can write four with hydrogen and 2 with oxygen. Let's name this step as delta H1 and this one as delta H2. Now we can see that in delta H1 two moles of N2H4 liquid are formed as the enthalpy of formation of N2H4 liquid is 50.6 kJ per mole so for two moles it will be 2 into 50.6. Second compound formed is N2O4 gas and the enthalpy change of formation is 9.2 kJ per mole as only one mole is being formed so we can write 9.2 kJ per mole. Now moving towards delta H2 we have 3 moles of nitrogen being formed and as it is a molecule so therefore the enthalpy change of formation is 0 for nitrogen. Next 4 water molecules are being formed. So for 4 number of moles we will multiply this value with 4. 
So it is equal to 4 into negative 241.8. According to Hess's law, the energy change in two steps is equal to the energy change in single step. So we can write delta H1 plus delta HR, it is equal to delta H2. Now delta H1 consists of enthalpy change of formation of N2H4. So we can write delta H formation of N2H4 liquid multiplied by 2 because 2 moles have been formed. Also we have N2O4 being formed so we can write enthalpy change of formation of N2O4 gas. plus delta HR equals enthalpy change of formation of water. Multiply by 4. Now putting values. The values come equal to 101.2 plus 9.2 plus delta HR equals negative 967.2. So delta HR will be equal to negative 967.2 minus 110.4. It becomes 1077.6 kilojoules per mole. The answer is A. Question 9. Hess's law and bond energy data can be used to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction. Bromoethane can be made by reacting ethene with hydrogen bromide. What is the enthalpy change for this reaction? We can find out the enthalpy change by using bond energy data from data booklet. Let's first draw the bonds. First one is ethene. We have one carbon double bond carbon. Four single bonds of carbon with hydrogen. One bond of hydrogen with bromine. And now the bonds that are formed is carbon carbon single bond. Then we have carbon hydrogen bonds. And we have one carbon bromine bond. Now we can write the number of bonds. We have one double bond. From data booklet, the energy is 610. We have four carbon hydrogen bonds. From data booklet, the energy is 410 for single bond. So for four bond, it will be 410 into four equals 1640. We have one HBr. The bond energy is 366. Now combining these three bond energies, the total bond energy taken in breaking bonds is 2616. Now you should remember that bond breaking is always endothermic, therefore it is written as positive. Now coming towards the product, we have one carbon single bond carbon which is equal to 350. Then we have carbon hydrogen bonds. We have 5 carbon hydrogen bonds, so it will be equal to 5 into 410, which comes equal to 2050. Third one, we have 1 carbon bromine bond that is formed, so it is equal to 280. Now combining these three, the total bond energy 
of bonds being formed is negative 2680. As bonds are being formed in the product, so therefore this will be exothermic. Therefore the sign is negative. Now for total enthalpy change, both energies should be combined together. So we have 2616 and 2680. Now the value of enthalpy change comes equal to negative 64 and the unit is kilojoules per mole. The answer is therefore B. Question 7. Enthalpy changes of combustion can be used to determine enthalpy changes of formation. The following equation represents the enthalpy change of formation of butane. 4 moles of carbon reacts with 5 moles of hydrogen to form 1 mole of butane which is gas. By using the following standard enthalpy of combustion data, what is the value of standard enthalpy change of formation of butane? We can apply Hess's law to find out the enthalpy change of formation as this is the equation we have carbon solid that reacts with hydrogen gas to form C4H10 the enthalpy change of formation is to be found as one mole of product is being formed from its reactants in their standard states now let's introduce combustion for carbon combustion the product is carbon dioxide and for the combustion of hydrogen the product is water so combustion can take place of element, it can also take place for this product which is butane. As balanced number of carbon atoms, we have 4 carbon atoms now balanced. 5 with H2O, so hydrogen is also balanced. We do not need to balance oxygen atoms. This is delta H1, which involves combustion of carbon and combustion of hydrogen to form carbon dioxide and water. This is delta H2 which includes combustion of C4H10. According to Hess's law, this is a two-step reaction as elements are first converted into reactant and then reactant is combusted to form product. And this is one-step reaction as elements are directly converted into combustion products. Let's put values for delta H1. We have combustion of carbon as there are four moles for carbon. So we can multiply 394 with four. It comes equal to minus 1576 kilojoules per mole. Similarly, we have 5 moles of hydrogen, so we can multiply this value with 5. So it comes equal to minus 1430. Now, adding these two, the total enthalpy change in delta H1 will be equal to minus 3006 kilojoules per mole. Now in delta H2, we can see that only one mole of C4H10 is being combusted. So the value will be as it is. So it is negative 2877 kilojoules per mole. Let's make an equation. One step is equal to the sum of two steps. Putting values for delta H1, we have minus 3006. Delta HF is yet to be found. Delta H2 value is negative 2877. So delta HF will be equal to minus 3006 plus 2877, which equals minus 129 kilojoules per mole. So this means that B is the answer. Question 33. Calcium reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. This is the balanced equation. The standard enthalpy change for this reaction is given, which is negative 414. What further information is needed in order to calculate the standard enthalpy change of formation of calcium hydroxide? We can rewrite this equation. We have calcium plus water, which forms calcium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Now this equation shows the standard enthalpy change of reaction. Now we can make a triangle if we know the elements that are involved. We have calcium, hydrogen and oxygen. 
Now these elements can first combine to form these reactants and these elements can also directly form this product. So according to Hess's law this will be a two step process and this will be one step process. So we can write delta H1 for this step and delta H2 for this second step which is the enthalpy of formation of calcium hydroxide. As in delta H1, we can see that calcium is present, which is unchanged, so therefore enthalpy of formation will be zero. Second, water is formed, so we would need enthalpy change of formation for water value for delta H1. In delta H2, we have enthalpy of formation of calcium hydroxide, which is to be calculated. And second is formation of hydrogen, as hydrogen is same, so therefore enthalpy change of formation of hydrogen is zero. We don't need the value for enthalpy change of formation of hydrogen. We also don't need the first and second ionization energy of calcium. Because we are not finding the lattice energy, we are finding the enthalpy change of formation of calcium hydroxide. As only option 1 is correct, the answer is therefore D. Question 8. Nitrogen and oxygen can react together to form nitrogen monoxide and O. The reaction is endothermic in nature. What is the bond energy for the bond between the atoms in NO? This enthalpy change represents the overall enthalpy change for the reaction. So we can write delta HR which is equal to the energy involved in bond breaking and energy involved in bond forming. So we can represent bond breaking by delta H1, bond forming by delta H2. So delta H1 is the energy required to break these bonds and del H2 is the energy released from forming this bond. Now from data booklet we can find the values for breaking N triple bond N. The energy required is 944 kilojoules per mole. For breaking double bond in oxygen we have 496 kilojoules per mole energy so combining these two we can find delta H1 as this is bond breaking so it is always endothermic and the sign is positive so 496 plus 944 this is for delta H1 the bond formation in NO the energy can be represented by x as there are two moles so we can write 2x now 2x is the energy released and that is in bond formation. Now we know that energy released is always exothermic in nature. So for delta H2 we can write negative 2x. This is because the bond is being formed and the energy will be released. Total energy is given which is overall energy of the reaction. It is 180. Now we can rearrange the equation. x equals 630 kilojoules per mole. This represents the bond energy between nitrogen and oxygen. Answer is therefore A. Question number 5. Two reactions are shown. Hydrogen gas converts into hydrogen atoms. Carbon monoxide converts into carbon dioxide gas. If molar amounts are used, how can the two energy changes associated with these reactions be described? So let's see what, what are the energy changes associated with these equations. A. Enthalpy change of atomization and enthalpy change of combustion. Atomization is actually when one mole of atoms is formed from the elements in the standard state. So in this equation actually two moles of hydrogen atoms are being formed so this is not the standard enthalpy of atomization. And enthalpy of combustion is when some substance is burnt in excess of oxygen to form the product. So in this equation carbon monoxide is being combusted in the presence of oxygen to give carbon dioxide. So yes, it is enthalpy of combustion. 
part b enthalpy of atomization again this is wrong and enthalpy of formation enthalpy of formation is actually when one mole of a compound is formed from the elements in their standard states in this equation carbon monoxide is not an element there should be actually carbon in the solid state then this was correct so this is also wrong c bond energy and enthalpy of combustion bond energy is something when a covalent bond is broken into its atoms so yes hydrogen gas is being converted into hydrogen atoms so actually hydrogen bonds is being broken and it forms two hydrogen atoms enthalpy of combustion it is correct as we already studied so it could be part c part d says bond energy bond energy is correct for hydrogen and enthalpy of formation now this is not enthalpy of formation because the elements are not in their standard states so the only option is part c and that is the answer thanks for watching if this was useful please do like subscribe and share